Hi, I just got my uh, hazmat endorsement for my CDL, commercial driver's license, and I wanted to go ahead and, and go through the section about hazardous materials and show you some things I underlined as soon as I got done with the test that I knew was on the test. One general tip that I would give you in taking the test is that, um, at least in Michigan, but I'm, but I'm sure it's all the same all over the place, they give you the option to skip a question. And so I skipped several questions that I, that I knew I was going to struggle with. It was going to take some time to try to answer. And some of those questions I never even got back to because as soon as you get the correct number of right answers, the, the, it's over. You don't have to take all the questions. They just want you to get your 18 out of 25 or whatever it's going to take to pass. And so bring your paperwork with you. You're probably going to sit there at the DMV and wait for your turn. Study while you're waiting. That's the only studying I did. The only studying I did was while I was waiting to take the test. And so um, so skip any questions that are hard, that, that's going to take some time, and then it, you can do it at the end. You'll know exactly how much, how much effort you need to put into making sure that you get it right. One of the questions that I saved with and saved and struggled with to the end was uh, talking about whether you have a thousand pounds of an item in order to need to have it placarded and counted hazardous, counted hazardous materials. And so specifically, I remember they had different types of hazardous materials, either a two or a four, if you look on the table there, a two or a four or an eight. And so specifically here, it was the eight that, that uh, you needed a thousand pounds of the corrosive in order for it to be marked hazmat. Apparently, for a four or a two, even smaller quantity, quantities would have to be, would have to count. So make sure that you're familiar with, with that. That was a specific question that was on the test. Second is they talked about the identification numbers. Know what, know what an identification number is? And specifically, I underlined here, under the list of regulated products, identification numbers. I underlined that first part of the paragraph. That was a very specific question on the test. So here on uh, page 106 in the Michigan Handbook, I underlined several different things. They have uh, six different symbols can appear in column one of the table. And so specifically, I saw what the A meant. You might want to know what all six of the symbols are, but specifically the A was on the test, what the A stands for. And means the hazardous material described in column is subject to HMR only when offered and intended transport by air. And then W is only when it's transported by water. A by air, W for water. And then column three shows uh, things that are forbidden. And so you, you as a regular shipper, a regular, uh, DM, regular uh, CDL person, you're never going to do anything that is forbidden. That was a specific question on the test. And then here I underlined that, um, that in order to do your job in placarding, you need to know these three things. The hazard class, the amount being shipped, and the amount of all the hazmat you have on your load. And so you'll see that's page 106 in the Michigan Handbook. I'm going to turn the page over here, see what else I underlined as soon as I got done with the test. Um, you know, a lot, some of these things are common sense and you can figure them out, but I figured I would mark down specifically specific questions that I remembered off of the test that would help you when, when you're taking the test. So here we are, we, we've got tank loading, section 9.5.2. And I specifically remember on my test, there being closed all manholes and valves before moving a tank of hazardous materials. And so you got to make sure that they're closed to prevent leaks. So specifically talked about the manholes being closed on the test. Oh, I talked about a safe haven. What's a safe haven? You need to know what a safe haven is. And so I underlined this portion on page 115 about what a safe haven is. That, that I remember being on the test. Um, here, explosives. You must have a written plan and follow that plan. Carriers prepare the route plan, but you have to have it with you when you're transporting it. So this, this talks about a route plan, when, uh, the route plan 